Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today, the Nerf Fortnite HCE. I have no idea what those letters mean. Drop a comment below if you can tell me. Out of the box, this is a standard front-loading Mega Dart Blaster, but today I'll show you how, with a little work inside, a bigger spring, and an interesting reversible brass barrel, I've turned this into an epic hand cannon firing short darts. Before we start though, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to like if you enjoy my content. All right, let's have a look inside. Okay, so this should come apart pretty simply. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 screws, unless there's any hidden ones underneath here. That was easy. It's all looked to be the same size. It's good. I think that's uh, held in place in there. It's alright, we'll deal with that later. They're also the same size. Okay, that's two bits. Again, these screws all the same size, which is good. Okay, so here's the insides. Good size plunger tube, good size spring, return spring for the slide. Uh, which pulls catch back, trigger and release. Put those aside. It's got a half of the handle. It's good. So, there is nothing else holding this in place. We can lift the whole thing out. Yeah, nice and simple. Okay, plunger tube. There's not much of a seal there. We can do something about that. That pops out really easy. Check those. All right, so we can knock this air seal out pretty simply and get rid of that part. Then we'll have a direct line through plunger through to the barrel. And obviously this is the size of a mega dart. So we'll find a way of fitting our barrel in place in there. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty simple. All right, let's start cutting. Okay, that's a good start. So I've got this inner piece that's cleared out and the air restrictor there I've removed. Now 17 30 seconds brass fits into half inch brass. So my plan is to take a piece of this and center it inside this orange piece like so. So that when I put my barrel in here, I'll have an air seal that I'll make sure that the dart just goes in, so I'll have the dart in there, and when I shove this in here, that'll push it in just enough. I have an air seal there, so that means I need to cut a piece of this short and find a way to fill up the inside of this so it's nice and centered. I'll see if I've got some uh, PVC pipe that'll do the job. Okay, so I've just got some random bits of pipe of different uh, diameters, some uh, plastic, some metal, and I'll just glue these in place uh, like so with some epoxy. That'll need some tape to center it. And then this is my half inch brass and I'll glue that one in last of all. And so that's how this will protrude from the front of the plunger tube, ready to receive the 17, 30 seconds brass when I stick the barrel in. So. That's what I'll go ahead and glue there. It's relatively close. Some might need a little bit of tape, but otherwise I'll just epoxy those all together and that'll keep it nice and centered. And the spring itself should just, yeah, that winds off pretty easily. And this should go on just as well. Might 
see if I can bend that end in a bit. That's a bit straight up. Okay, so that should be fine. Uh, O-ring I'll get to after. Okay, so gluing that bit is going to be next. Okay, so this is all glued together. So I'll just sort of let that dry. Now the O-ring here, just lift off. Don't lose it. So I'll just get some uh, Teflon tape to wrap. Yeah, that feels like a much better seal. You can actually see the plunger tube is tapered, so it's it narrows about there, so that's easy. And then that last bit is more of a push. But it does go in okay there, I think. It's still an okay seal there. Okay, it's a few days later. My DIY spacer has set, the epoxy has cured. That's leaving me with a half inch piece and you can see it's angled from the pipe cutter. So that'll help it slide into the barrel itself smoothly. So that's gonna sit in the front of the plunger tube like so. Now, because we removed the um, plastic stopper that was inside this, that the plunger head would uh, hit. I've grabbed this silicon uh, pad from a, another worker kit and when I've put that in place, that'll sit against that so the plunger head can hit that for a bit of padding rather than slamming against this bit itself. And then the front end, that will go over the top and these little clips go over these little knobs. Maybe a bit of Teflon tape around each side of this bit for seal. Though. Okay, so then that's gonna be in the front and this is my barrel. First go at creating a hybrid barrel, so 16 millimeter aluminium tube with 17 30 seconds brass inside. Using a Dremel I ground an angle and then sanded it with lots of sandpaper and metal polish to give me a nice smooth lip. So that's going to do two things. One is when I feed my darts in the front they'll go in smoothly whichever way I do it and when they're in and I stick the barrel in the half inch brass it's protruding here will slide in smoothly and then I've got an air seal between the 17 30 seconds brass inside here and the outside of this half inch brass which could actually do with a bit of a polish I'll do that as well okay so the last thing I need to do then is because the inner diameter of this front barrel is for mega darts of course they're thicker than this 16 millimeter aluminium so what I plan to do is wrap some tape around this end, right in the middle, and this end, so that when this is inserted into the front there, there's always two points, either there and there, or there and there, where this front barrel is centered within the mega barrel. So it should both feed neatly into the half inch uh, protruding stem there, by being centered, but also be held relatively straight and level um, and not flop around inside this front barrel. So uh, hopefully shoot straight. So uh, I'll go and do that and uh, we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so there's the half inch brass shined up. That's a bit smoother, a bit nicer. It goes in very nicely either end. And as you can see, tape around both ends in the middle of the barrel. So that sits in nice and firmly either way okay just one other thing i realized my space actually protruded beyond this line so i just had to grind that back so that it would fit neatly inside here uh, that's good now so i'll just do one wrap of tape for a good seal and just double checking this needs to be around that way That'll fit in there. I've got my uh, silicon pad in there. And click and click. So uh, it looks like these actually got damaged when I uh, pried it apart. 
So to help hold that together, I might give it a, a wrap of tape as well, or a few wraps. All right, that seems nice and firm. And, and it drops back in the shell nicely. So that's good. Let's see if this uh, spring is gonna work. So actually it needed to be around that way, didn't it? Now the spring has to fit inside this molding. It's good. I'll just give it a twist. Just so that loose end isn't poking out this way against the other side of the shell. Okay, let's see if I can remember how this goes back together. That's the easy part. Now this would go on the inside, I guess. That looks like a catch. And that's the trigger. So far, so good. So I've got my M2.6 10mm self-tapping hex or socket head screws. Again the screws were the same throughout the blaster so that's uh, easy, you don't have to remember different sizes for different locations. Alright. Just that metal rod I had to make sure it would fit over that. That's alright. Uh, front. Good. Just note this little uh, clip here to slide inside. Yep, okay, that's gone back together. Now, does it prime? It does. Does it fire? Yep, it fires. Okay, a couple of final things before we take this one outside to get some numbers. This is the barrel I created, uh, so 10 centimeters long. I've got this orange heat shrink that I've put over the top for a few reasons. One, to avoid the electrical tape from uh, getting pushed out of place or uh, stripping off as I stick it in and out of the barrel. Another thing is it's orange which is pretty cool for a attachment that sticks out the front of your blaster. But you can see where I've got the tape at uh, three points front, middle and back. I also made a longer barrel. This is 12 centimeters of 17 30 seconds brass. Just to see if a, a bit of extra length will affect FPS. So again it sits inside 16 millimeter aluminium with a nice chamfer at each opening. Tape at three points and then heat shrink over the top. Now maybe think that a simpler way of doing this mod if you have access to 3D printing would be to just print a ring and you wouldn't even need the aluminium. You could print it to take the 17 30 seconds brass directly, including with a, a bit of a chamfered edge. So you could have a piece that sat on each end that was as long or as short as you might need to do the job of sitting firmly within the barrel. but still be able to remove easily. And then the same thing, a printed ring spacer in the middle to help hold the barrel centered. The other tricky thing as we saw was the spacer that sits at the front of the plunger tube inside that orange ring that holds the half inch brass stub that fits into the end of the barrel. You could also design a 3D printed piece that again did that, that same job rather than doing what I did to glue a bunch of different lengths of pipe together um, to, to build up that piece. I think it'd be a fairly easy job to design a piece that had the right outer diameter and the right inner diameter to hold that half inch brass that you could just fit directly in place. So those few 3D printed pieces would make this an even simpler upgrade because other than that coupling piece that holds the half inch brass stub and these bits to hold the 17 30 seconds inch barrel in place, 
this is really just a spring upgrade. So I'd love to see if somebody took it upon themselves to go and design and print up those pieces. That would make an easy mod that much easier. Okay, so last thing is, of course, I'm using Worker Gen 3s. This is the dart that our local group uses. As you can see, it suits the color style of this blaster pretty well. So let's take it outside now and uh, we'll get some FPS readings for each of the barrel lengths, see what works better. Okay, let's get some numbers from the Fortnite HCE. So this is a short dart mod spring upgrade with a reversible brass barrel. This is the 10 centimeter barrel that I'll try first using Worker Gen 3s. Let's see how we go. Again, the loading mechanism. Okay, it looks fairly decent, around 130 or so. Now I'll try the 12 centimeter barrel and see how that goes. Okay, I think I can tell from that that the longer barrel gave me slightly higher FPS readings. So I'll use this one now and we'll do a bit of an accuracy test. Here I am, 30 feet from the target, Worker Gen 3s. Uh, handy hint, if you play single shot rounds like our club does, um, putting your darts in a magazine and your magazine in your pocket is an easy way to ensure that you're always picking up a dart ready to load and fire during a game. Let's see how we go. I think it's pretty decent accuracy at this distance, of course no sight, just eyeballing. Let's go back to 50 feet and see how we go there. Okay, 50 feet now, this might be a little more challenging. Let's see how we go. That's a bullseye. Last one. Another bullseye. Very good. Okay, so at 50 feet, every shot was still bang on target, a couple of bullseyes, so that's really great. I think this is a very serviceable weapon for single shot rounds or even as a sidearm. As you can see, pretty straightforward, pretty quick to load. A little muscle memory, that's easy to do without looking when you're on the run, taking cover, etc. So I think this blaster is a very serviceable weapon for single shot rounds at super stock events up to around 150 FPS. So there you have it. That's the Nerf Fortnite HCE, short dart mod with a reversible brass barrel. Now a very serviceable single shot short dart blaster for use at super stock events with a cap of 150 FPS. Please leave any questions or comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.